So seeing now as the Cologne seems to be the go-to place for as a mains out there, with many great builds I'm seeing people come up with, including my Lazy Zane build, I've decided to bring you guys a video on 10 amazing weapons for usage with that Digi Cologne. How's it going guys, my name is DPJ and today I'll bring you another BR3 video. If you do enjoy it, leaving a like it really helps out and subscribe if you do want to see more. Also before we go any further guys, for all your gaming needs, no matter the platform you play on, at amazing prices and incredible weekly deals, check out G2A linked within the video description. So these top 10 I will state are 10 weapons I found to work amazingly within the hands of the Digi Clone. What I mean by this is when you are using a cologne build and you have that double barrel perk selected or that double barrel skill selected, this allows the cologne to spawn in with a copy of your currently equipped weapon. Some weapons, although you wouldn't think would be great or efficient, indeed are actually incredible. And that's what today is, 10 amazing weapons for usage with that double barrel skill within the hands of that digi clone. Now all the testing I did with the weapons was done with my lazy Zayn build, which if you are interested in, you'll find it linked within the video description. So let's get into the video people, 10 amazing digi clone weapons. At 10, we have nothing other than the sickle. So the sickle is a weapon you can farm at the warden on the anvil. And I can remember at one stage, this was literally one of, if not the best weapons in the game. When they introduced the 6 extra mayhem levels, its damage output seemed like it was kind of left behind. And with so many new weapons being introduced, people quickly moved on. But now, with those 3 extra levels, equaling a level 60 weapon, and probably changes made within the phase 2 patch, it seems like it's back or close to its former self. So it was one of the first I tested on the Digiclone and I was actually surprised at how great it was. Isn't the most powerful you will see today, obviously that's why it's at the number 10 spot, but it is quite powerful as you can see on the screen now. And you can see this with me going to a few different bosses. And to be honest, it's where I test all my weapons, between 3 or 4 bosses throughout the game just to mix it up. And the sequel is doing indeed absolutely great. Okay, so moving on, and in at number 5 we have the Beacon. So the Beacon is a new pistol which was introduced with the Bounty of Blood DLC and drops from an enemy called Jerick Logan upon Bloodson Canyon. This Maluan pistol has the option, like most Maluan weapons, to switch up that element. This doesn't come into play though with the Digiclone. The first element on the weapon of the two is the one he will spawn in with. But as you can see, pair up the right elements against those weaker to it, and the results are astonishing. This little monster is in fact just a that. So this Maliwan pistol, in my opinion, is a must get for you Zane mains out there. <laughs> So moving on and in at number 8, we have nothing other than the Kyosun. Yeah guys, the Kyosun is actually an effective weapon within the hands of that Digiclone. Now we know Gearbox nerfed this weapon, it wasn't the craziest nerf we've seen in the past, but it's far from the weapon it once was, and I'm sure you would agree. But within the hands of the Digiclone, this thing is a true monster, 
almost like it was pre-nerfed in the hands of us Vault Hunters. So the Kyosin is an exclusive drop to General Trunt, and I believe at the moment there might be something up with his loot pool, as many folks I have been hearing been complaining about this and it not dropping. I mean I've had it a couple of times, but the amount of times I've killed him, it does seem like it's a rare weapon now. Remember though, if you go to farm for this, it's an exclusive to Mayhem 6 and above at General Trunt. It doesn't drop anywhere else and it doesn't drop on a Mayhem 5 and below. But yeah people, this is now actually an amazing weapon in the hands of the clone, so I do recommend you checking it out. Okay, so moving on, and in at number 7 we have the Monarch. Now the Monarch is known as the Dictator 2.0, and for good reason. This thing is absolutely a beast. It's a great weapon, but not just in the hands of the Digiclone. If you use right with any build, this thing tears things apart. The one problem with this though, again like the Kaosin, is it seems for the most part to be a rare drop. So the Monarch drops from Kilovolt, who is located upon Electricity. It drops offering all or no elements, and within the hands of the Digiclone, it's an all round amazing weapon. It's truly a shame though the clone doesn't use its second firing mode, as the clone is stationary so it wouldn't really make much of a difference to him but unfortunately that isn't the case, but even still the weapon is a must. <laughs> Okay so moving on and in at number 7 we have the yellow cake. So the yellow cake isn't available now for you to go out and farm for as it's a legendary exclusive to an event which has expired for now. And I say this because I did see Gearbox state somewhere that the Revenge of the Cartels event will return or at least a way to obtain a weapons exclusive to it. Now another thing about this yellow cake is the fact it did receive a massive damage nerf and I think it's damage dropped by like 50% and it did kind of fall off the radar, but I don't know why. This thing is still an utter monster, and within the hands of the clone, it tears things apart as you can see on the screen now. So I'm hoping somewhere you will still have this, even at that level 57. It's still an absolute beast, and I do recommend you checking it out on your Zayn Digiclone build. Ah. <laughs> Okay, so moving on, and in at number 5 we have the Complex Root. So the Complex Root is the Malawan Sniper which was introduced with the latest Bounty of Blood DLC. This drops from an enemy called Lanny Dixon who can be found upon Ashfall Peaks. And well, the weapon is just utterly amazing. Now this was one of the first weapons I covered from the latest DLC, as I just knew it would be a fan favourite and it turned out to be true. This sniper which drops offering all elements in which you can switch between like all, well most Malawan weapons is one of the most unique weapons in the game now, but it's also incredibly powerful, and what it's capable of can't be matched by many other snipers in the game. <laughs>
Okay, so moving on, and in at number four, we have the back burner. So the back burner is a launcher which kind of reminds me and its users of a heavy lub, especially with the way it works. But this thing for me is now stepping on the toes of the best heavies in the game, and I know many people out there believe this already to be the king of the heavies. And you can't really argue that, the damage this thing is capable of now is actually scary, both in your hands and in the hands of that digi clone. And it's a weapon I would 100% insist you get in and try and act. Now this thing drops off in all elements I believe and it drops from the Agonizer 9000 upon the guts of Carnivora. Now for me this is a horrible farm, one of the worst, but at the same time it rewards one of the best so I'd say get there, get it over with, get your reward and get out of there. But yeah the Backborner is an absolute must of a weapon and it works incredibly with that digi clone. Okay, so moving on, and in at number three, we have the light show. So the light show I received uh, about a day after the Bounty of Blood DLC released, and I knew right away this thing was going to be absolutely crazy. But little did I know that it could do what it can do with the clone. Upon me testing it, I was actually shocked at how powerful this was. I thought I'd somehow glitched something and had stacked damage from somewhere, but nope, I kept testing, and wow, this thing is truly unbelievable. So the light show, as you might know, is a new pistol with the Bounty of Blood DLC, and this thing drops from the Lasso Dactyl upon the Obsidian Forest. I mean, you guys are seeing what this thing can do. You don't need me to tell you to go grab this thing. Okay, so moving on, and in at number two, we have the Sandhawk. So the Sandhawk I've had a mixed relationship with. When this was introduced into the game, and I, as I main Zane, I said within the review I made on it, I can definitely see sniper benefits, but it just didn't fit my style of play. And for a sniper, which is incredibly powerful, it just burned through its ammo way too quickly. And it just put me off using it because I wasn't prepared to change up my build just to suit this thing. The weapon then reserved a slight nerf I believe which wasn't too long ago but it didn't really bother me as I wasn't too keen on the weapon anyway. But testing this thing in the hands of that digi clone, wow the sniper is unbelievable. I mean you have to see it to believe it, it just mounts absolutely everything for sure. Now this Sandhawk is a sniper that drops off in all elements which you can farm for exclusive at Katagawa Jr upon Atlas HQ. I'd still say though using it myself, it still doesn't do anything for me, but within the hands of that clone, this, I just had to include this thing on this list, and high up the list because it is that good. Okay, so moving on, and in at number one, and my favourite weapon for the clone is the OPQ system. So the OPQ system, like the yellow cake, you can't legitly farm for right now, because the event it dropped from has now ended. So you can't get a level 60 version, legitly. But let me tell you, that does not matter a single bit. This weapon, if you have one stored away, needs to be in your inventory, and you should be equipping that clone with it. Now although I won't say this is the best weapon I featured today for Boss Martin, it still does an amazing job at that, but at the same time this thing mounts in all places like the Malawan Raid, the Slaughter Shaft, just about anywhere where there are a ton of ads. This thing is that incredible. Now what is important, as I don't think I mentioned it at the beginning of the video which you should uh, take on board, is that anointments on these weapons do not affect the Digiclone at all. So if you have one of the weapons I featured today, but looking for one for the purpose of usage with a clone, it doesn't really matter because it's not needed. 
the client doesn't get affected by anointments. Now, if you plan on helping that client out, which for the most part isn't needed, especially if my lasers ain't build, there are plenty of anointments out there which will assist you. Switching places with a Digiclone grants 130% damage is great, while action skills are active grants 200% damage is also great, but it is just up to you and what you want to go for. So just keep that in mind. But yeah guys, those are my top 10 legendaries for usage with that Digi Clone. I obviously haven't tested everything out. So if you have any suggestions, ones that I might have missed, let me know down below in that comments section. But on that note guys, we have come to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Borderlands, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next. One.